Hello and welcome to my stream. I'm Kat Kruger. My pronouns are she, her, and today is Monday, so I'm doing solo RPG or solo games. I've changed it to because it's not necessarily going to be an RPG. I've been playing some other solo games as well. Hey, social is by. Happy Monday. I hope you had a good weekend. Uh, how was the art festival? I hope you got some good uh, some good art. Um, so I'm I've been playing um, Little Kitty Big City on the Switch. It just came out last week. Um, I think I've almost finished it. Actually, it's not a very long game. Um, I was reading. I think it uh, it takes only two hours to to complete it. But um, if you're looking to get everything, um, it um, uh, it it takes more like six or seven hours. Oh no, I'm so sorry about your car trouble. I can absolutely relate to that because last week I had a dentist appointment. I think I told you about it and um, I was gonna be like 10, 15 minutes late because the car started, like it, it turned out to be spark plugs. So like the, the car started wobble, wobbling and then I started smelling like um, something burning um, and yeah. I was only going to be 10 to 15 minutes late to my dentist appointment, but they they said I had to reschedule instead, so it's so annoying. Oh my gosh, I don't know, that's so weird. Hello, Jess. <laughs> well, I appreciate the anger uh, on my behalf. Jess, while you're here, do you want to see the thing that I'm making for you? Because I, I, I've been working on it uh, on my Fridays, but I'm not going to spoil it if you don't want to see it. Um, because I've been cross-stitching and I found a pattern for you. Yes, you did. <laughs> did you get spoiled already for it? Yes, it is. Uh, it is a... Oh no! <laughs> oh well, that's good. I'm gonna show you because um, I'm almost. I, I just have the lettering to do. Um. <laughs> uh, it's really funny. It's not actually supposed to say sup, but I have been tempted to just leave it uh, as sup. But um, yes. <laughs> I was just looking for some fun patterns for friends, and and I made I made a different one for Brittany that um, <laughs> uh, is a Sims one. I'm gonna show you the Sims one before before I start my st stream here, because I thought um, uh, Brittany has such a wonderful setup behind her for her um, Zoom calls and things. So, and this is a joke. So. I just thought this would be perfect above her head, behind uh, behind her. <laughs> uh, all right, well, um, I will just let you know that there's an ad break coming in, so I'm not gonna necessarily start talking too much about um, this game, but I'm gonna show it here. This is the game I'm going to be playing today. It's called Be Like a Cat. And um, because I've been playing Little Kitty Big City, I just, I don't know. I got the, I got the PDF back in December um, and didn't, didn't really take a look at it. Um, and then um, the book shipped like a couple weeks ago. So I, and it just happened to come at around the same time that um, Little... Little Kitty Big City um, arrived, so, or was published. All right. So, as I said, I, isn't it? It's super cute. Um, it also came with these little prints.
just like little prints, which are awesome. <clears throat> And I'm going to just show some art in here. A little, little kitty. <laughs> Brave new world. I love it. So these are all the different uh, uh, types of settings. So I'm just showing some of the art here because um, there are different settings that you can play. Um, I know that there's an urban setting, so that is probably the one that I'm going to do, but there's like swashbuckling and um, uh, sci-fi star, star, star paws. Um, what are all the, what are all the scenarios here? Um, urban cat, brave mew world, the book of Bastet, uh, star paws, and a perfect storm. Um, Anyway, um, now that we're back from the ad break, I'm just going to um, kind of go through this because like I said, I, yeah, I know it's, it's so good. It's like, it's not a very big book, but it's got enough scenarios to um, really encourage a lot of different types of replayability if you didn't want to just continue with whatever you picked first. Um, like I said, though, I haven't looked at this at all since I got it, so you're going to learn with me. Um, <laughs> Look at this little sad kitty. Um, I know that I'm going to play the urban cat scenario because of um, a video game that I've been playing. So let's just start with um, introduction, a short tale about a brave little kitten. And there's a little story here. Um, and I think this was shared on their Kickstarter page because this is the thing that hooked me on it. Um, so it says introduction, a kitten's tale. And then it's crossed out tail. Um, all right, so story time. <clears throat> it has been dark for a few hours now, and the big ones have stopped moving around above me. I nuzzle my way out of the blanket from between my brothers and sisters and creep slowly across the room. My mother is sleeping, still exhausted from tending to my siblings and me. She told me that we should spend most of our day sleeping because in our dreams, we can experience the adventures of our kin who live outside the safety of the big one's walls. In our dreams, we are safe no matter what stalks us. But I feel the call, something ancient from a place far away that expands forever outwards, a place where I can trade the safety of the walks, uh, of the walls surrounding me for a life of adventure and exploration. I move from the soft floor where we all sleep and where the big ones spend most of their waking time to the place with the cold floor where we eat. I take one small chunk of hard food from our shared bowl, something to give me energy for what lies ahead. As I crunch down on the small meaty rock with my teeth, I wonder what I might eat beyond this place. I imagine what sights, sounds, and smells I will experience if I make it beyond the little door that the big ones have placed inside their big door. A small opening just for us that mother occasionally uses to venture out into the world for a few moments each day. I walk towards the door without looking back at my family. If I'm going, I should go quickly and without thinking about what I am leaving behind. This journey is mine. Maybe one day I will return older, wiser, and with my own kittens, but I must travel alone for now. Many times I have watched my mother move through this little door. I place my head against it and push as hard as I can. It begins to rise ever so slightly. 
My back legs slide across the floor. I shove harder, getting a paw in the door to wedge it open. But the door is too grand an opponent for my tiny body. It grasps at my paw and traps it. A pain runs through my leg. I cry out. I fear my little voice cannot travel far enough for anyone to hear. But desperation drives me on. My back claws extend and look for something to grip. I push with everything I have. The door begins to yield a little, then a little more. I squeeze both of my legs through. I am now between two worlds. Behind me, the warmth and safety of the walls and my family. Ahead of me, the smell of dying leaves and the low and distant growls of alley cats and foxes, those mythical beasts my mother told me of to ward me um, from leaving her side. I pump my legs wildly as I attempt to pull my body through the small door. My front paws touch the cold earth outside of the walls. I have made my first step into a new world. And then I feel the clasp of giant hands on my belly and I am being pulled backwards and up into the air. The hands spin me around, bringing me face to face with my human. They look at me and shake their head. Where do you think you are going? They speak as they walk me back to the blanket and wedge me between my brothers and sisters. I try to tell the big one that destiny calls me, that I have a connection to something much older and wiser than the big ones, and our places and our places in the world without walls. As always, I fear they do not understand the noises I make as much as I do not understand most of theirs. The big one strokes my head and makes a familiar combination of noises. You're so cute. <laughs> uh, all right, so we have, this is, um, well, it's just like a, a little excerpt, I guess, to get your, um, get an idea <laughs> of how this game plays out. All right, so chapter one says, sharpen your claws. Be Like a Cat is a unique role-playing game. I know, poor Trap Busy. Uh, it's a unique role-playing game that drops you into the world of an ever-curious and feisty feline. In this game, for one or two players, I actually don't think I realized this could have been played with two players as well. That's interesting. I wonder how that plays out. You will explore new territory, attempt to claim it as your own, and work towards other objectives. Um, think Moggy Mafia. This brief chapter contains an overview of the game and its key concepts. Later sections explain everything mentioned below in greater detail. <clears throat> My allergies have been <clears throat> kind of out of control. <clears throat> So my voice and my, um, I'm kind of losing my voice right now. The thing is, like, I, I have not had allergies for years. And this year, I don't know, something, something is in the air. Okay, what you will need. There are a few things you should have at hand or paw to get the most out of playing Be Like a Cat. A cat stat sheet. You'll need this to track information about your cat and its skills. There's one at the back of this book, and you can download more at criticalcat.co.uk slash cat. If you use six-sided dice, these generate the random places you will discover and the events and encounters you experience as you explore the world. They are also used to make skill checks when attempting difficult tasks or engaging in a fight. Uh, a means of recording your story. Recording your story is optional, but keeping a journal is a great way to flex your creative writing skills and reminisce on your adventures at a later date. So anyone who follows my uh, cat stats, I know. Uh, anyone who follows my, um, uh, you know, I started with solo um, RPGs and I, I have always felt like it really is a great way of flexing those creative writing um, skills. It's and that's why I do it on Mondays, because it feels like um, a wonderful way of just sort of doing that exercise, um, creative exercise. 
And then we have a few territory tracker sheets. These enable you to track places you've explored and record the territory you control. Oh, there's one at the back of this book. You can also download more at that link. You can also use a digital tool such as Roll20 or Dungeon Scroll to manage your territory. <laughs> That's so cute. So objectives, the base objective of Be Like a Cat is to explore and take control of your territory. However, there are themed scenarios which outline other aims and goals you can work toward. Okay. Um, I'll read the rest of this chapter and then I think I need to... Um, I did not realize I needed those uh, cat stats, so I'm going to get those pages into my journal. All right, so we have life cycle stages here. Over time, your cat will pass through a few life cycle stages and acquire new skills and knowledge as it grows. You will begin as a kitten and progress through the following life cycle stages. Young adult, mature adult, and senior. You can find more detailed information on life cycle stages in chapter two, kitty creation, and chapter three, the court rules. Locations and encounters. Each time you visit a new location, you will roll six six-sided dice to generate the surroundings and creatures you find there. Some areas will be unoccupied and controlling them will be easy. However, others will be home to incumbent creatures who will not relinquish their turf without a fight or negotiation. Skills. Your cat has many skills that may help or hinder as it explores the world. Skills come into play when you attempt something tricky or almost impossible. In such instances, you make a skill check referring to the skill scores on your skill scores on your cat stats sheet. I love saying cat stat. Uh, and rolling some dice to see if you succeed. You will find more details on making skill checks in Chapter Three: The Core Rules. Tracking territory. You will also keep track of the territory you gain control of as you explore the world. You take over locations one at a time. However, other cats are always looking to muscle in on your turf. There's more on this in Chapter 3, The Core Rules. All right, and here is uh, the last bit here. Solo or two-player. Whilst you can be, play Be Like a Cat by yourself, you can also enjoy this experience with a friend or partner. A short section at the end of Chapter 3, The Core Rules, outlines how to introduce a second player to the game. Now you have an idea of some of the main concepts of the game. You are ready to create a kitten. All right, so I'm going to go um, try to add this to my journal. So as some of you know, I use good notes um, for my journals. Um, and it is very helpful because I can just grab a sheet like this and then stick it into um, my digital notebook basically. All right, so we're going to go to critical kit.co.uk slash cat. They also have be like a crow. I think that was their first game. Um, to add to cart second so it is available for free um, I just need to go through the motions of actually downloading everything so all my information I know I have the PDF somewhere I just uh um, I think this is just going to be faster. Hmm. All right, download the sheets now. Then I'm going to unzip. And then I'm going to go put it into my good notes. Um, let's see, I need to import. Okay. 
can't find. Hmm. Add a page after. Oh, here we go. Import. So the character sheet and tracker. Okay. I'm going to close this and then hopefully it will show up in my good notes and then I'm going to share my journal screen. <laughs> I don't know if you you would be muscling in on my on my uh territory or maybe we would be like two kittens from the same from the same litter maybe venturing out on our own. Um, this might take a moment. It's not sinking yet. All right, let's see if it will sink. Usually it's really fast. Oh, here we go. Maybe now. It's working on it. Here we go. All right. I'm gonna go share my share my uh, journal. I need to resize this. It's good. Before I do that. Mickey, here we go. All right. All right, so here is the cat stat sheet. And I guess this is sort of like session zero, so help me um help me create a cat. Okay, so chapter two is kitty creation. Uh the first thing you need to do in a game of be like a cat is create a kitten. This is the feline character you will play in the game. Your kitten has various attributes and skills, which you need to record on a cat stat sheet. Um, creating a character is separate from actual play in many role-playing games. In Be Like a Cat, however, the process is intertwined with your story. Character creation here represents your formative years, and the process involves you rolling dice to ascertain how good you are at each skill and recording your exploits in your journal. As your kitten gains more experience and has new encounters, it will grow into a young adult cat and likely pass through more life cycle stages later. At each life cycle, life cycle stage, it may, might gain or lose its aptitude in some skills. Life cycle stages are explained in greater detail in chapter three, The Corbels. Here we will focus on the first life cycle stage, Kitten, as it has its own little set of rules. When you are ready, grab your cat stat sheet, something to write with, such as a pen, pencil, or digital note-taking app, and a few six-sided dice, D6. Uh, once you have these items, work through the following sections to create your kitten. All right, so let me make sure I've got my, my dice here. I don't 
actually know who made these dice, but they're my most sparkly dice. I don't know if you can see the, the glitter in them. I don't think I have any cat type ones, so. Okay. Step one, choose your background. Your kitten will be born into one of three backgrounds, feral, stray, or domestic. The following pages detail these backgrounds and how they affect your skills and abilities. Pick the one which calls to you. Make a note on your cat stat sheet of your chosen background, the associated starting location, and any bonus and weakness your kitten receives. Don't worry if these don't make sense to you now. They will become clearer once you have read chapter three, the core rules. Once you've selected your background, write something in your journal about where you were born, approaching it with fresh eyes, as if you were seeing everything for the first time. On your territory tracker, make note of your starting location and describe it in your journal. Okay, so feral is, uh, you're a real wild thing, born into nature. You've never known the warmth of a home. You are generally wary of other creatures, especially humans. Physical appearance, despite living outdoors, you will likely take good care of yourself. Regular preening means you have a clean and well-kept coat of fur, though you may also bear scars from the many, scrap, uh, many scrapes you've gotten yourself into. Um, I don't know if I'll read all of that. Um, so, so behavior, starting location, uh, bonuses, and weaknesses. Um, maybe I'll just go through all of it anyway. Um, at the bottom here, feline fact, cats sleep up to 18 hours a day. Um, let's see, behavior, generally unsociable. You avoid contact with other creatures and humans whenever possible. You do not like to be touched. In uncomfortable social situations, you will attempt to back off or show aggression if pushed. However, you may align yourself with other cats near locations you or they control and become a colony member or even a leader. Starting location, woodlands, countryside, farms, parks. Um, mark 1d6 location. Yeah, this this has, there's like just, just vibes here, <laughs> for sure. Um, um, choose one of these locations. Bonus, you are a survivor and master hunter. You can make all prowl and hunt skill checks with courage. Weakness, you have limited social skills. Make a make all cute and signal skill checks with timidity. Stray. Once you had a home, but you were either abandoned or became lost, and now the streets are where you are forced to survive. Sitting somewhere between your feral and domestic relatives, you are hardy and streetwise with caution with a cautious but not unfriendly attitude towards humans. Physical appearance, constantly looking for food and shelter. You have little time to worry about your appearance. Your coat is unbrushed and dirty from rooting around in bins. Behavior, you are cautious but also opportunistic. You will befriend other cats if it is in your interest. You will also approach humans for food or shelter. Starting location, any back garden, alley, or bins behind a restaurant. Decide which area of your town or city you started life in and mark one location square on your territory tracker as your location, as your starting location. Bonus, you are agile and streetwise. Uh, select any two travel skills that you can always make with courage. Weakness, you are scruffy looking and have become accustomed to help from humans. Choose any social skill and any survival skill to always make with timidity. Between two worlds, Depending on how your story unfolds, when you advance from being a young adult to a mature adult life cycle stage, you can optionally change, uh, choose to change your background to feral or domestic. You keep the bonus and weakness from the stray background and combine them with your new background. You can only do this once in your lifetime. Hello, Jane. We're playing, um, I'm just going through like the initial character creation for Be Like a Cat. Um, which I am taking inspiration from Little Kitty, Big City. So I think I'm going to be the the third option for cats, and it's going to be domestic. Um, 
Born into a warm and loving home, you have a close affinity with the humans you share that home with. You also protect this piece of turf above all others. Physical appearance, you are cared for by your humans and your coat is always shiny and well brushed. Uh, behavior, you are reasonably sociable and whilst wary of other creatures, you will approach humans for strokes, loops, and play. However, your reliance on humans has come at the cost of some of your survival, survival skills, though you have managed to hone your aptitude for hunting, um, at the expense of the local mouse and bird population. Oh, sorry. However, your reliance on humans has come at the cost of some of your survival skills, though you have managed to hone your aptitude for hunting at the expense of the local mouse and bird population. All right. Uh, starting territory, a warm, cozy house. Uh, mark one location square on your territory tracker as your starting location. Anytime you return here, you can get access to food and heal any injuries you may have sustained. Bonus, you are a master manipulator of humans. Um, make all social checks on humans with courage. Weakness, you are not as agile as you think you are. Make all balance and jump checks with timidity. When you fail either of these checks, roll a d 1d6, and on a result of one, your failure becomes the subject of a viral internet video. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, so the uh, lack of agility here uh, and domesticity um, is definitely a me cat anyway, so I'm going to play a domestic cat. Um, <laughs> so far, it's, it seems incredibly cute. Um, another feline fact is that a group of cat is, cats is called a clouder. I don't think I actually knew that. All right, so I'm gonna go over here back into my journal, and so I've got my cat stat sheet, and we have to come up with a name for this domestic kitty. Um, I don't think I need the scenario yet, but I do need a life. Well, the life cycle stage is kitten. <laughs> um any any suggestions for my kitty name when i did have a cat once upon a time uh she was called shadow cat <laughs> she was a black cat with uh like green eyes elsa oscar marigold marigold <laughs> peaches madame le Fleur. Sounds like too too big of a name for a, a little kitty. Maybe she can grow into the Madame name though. I... All right, let's see. Um. I do like the idea of like her possibly growing into the name like it could be Lefloof or maybe Ms. Lefloof and then she grows into Madame Lefloof let's, let's start that or I'm trying to think of what other um what other name we can use before um Le Fleuf instead of Madame um
you know, I'm just going to put loop loop here. Background is domestic. Starting location. Um, I'm going to say it's a um, it's an apartment because I am taking inspiration from um, little, little Kitty Big City. Um, my bonus is how do I write this in? I wonder. <clears throat> Social make all social checks on humans. Courage. Weakness is uh, make all balance and jump checks with timidity and um, this is very much me as a cat even playing um even playing um little kitty um the controls i'm constantly falling off of glitches <laughs> oh donut cat in dungeon crawling cough I love that name actually. I'm gonna remember it. I'm gonna change it. Jane, I think I might I might um I might go with uh um donut or croissant. Mm. What about Princess Donut? <laughs> I think I'm, I, I, yeah, I think I'm actually going to go with Princess Donut. Because uh, this is just going to be, she's going to actually think that she's very much a princess, um, but the name Donut is just not a princess name. Um, how else do I fill out my character sheet here? Mark one location square on your territory tracker. Okay, so I need to go over here. Do I just pick any square? Maybe I will be, I don't know, over here. I'm going to make a little house symbol in here. Sheet one. Princess. 
inshallah. Every cat deserves a title, absolutely. Her full name is Princess Donut, yes. <laughs> or Princess Donut Loof. What if it's Princess Donut Loof? Loof. I'm doing it. to get into the game today we're just gonna do all this <laughs> oh okay <laughs> um what else do i have to fill out here starting location my bonus my weakness um Step two, developing your skills when you first create your kitten or when you advance to any life cycle stage after young adult, you can develop your skills. <laughs> That's hilarious, Jane. I, don't, I have not seen a uh, dungeon crawler crawl. Um, when you, uh, all skills have a score between one and six, the higher the score, the better your cat is at that skill. All skills have an initial value of one. On the following page, you can see a categorized list of the skills your cat possesses and a brief summary of the type of activity each one represents. To develop skills, you must first mark a few that you will attempt to improve as a kitten. Uh, use one of the following methods to mark those skills for development. Okay, so we can mark two skills from each main skill category to be, to be developed, or for each skill on your cat stat sheet, roll a, a d6. If you roll a four or above, mark that skill for development. Oh, okay, so we either pick or let the dice pick. Um, the next step is ascertaining how well you developed the above marked skills. Remember that all your skills have an initial value of one, so add any score improvements to that base. Roll one d6 for each marked skill. The following table shows how the results of this roll impacts that skill. So if you get a result of one, the development is failure and nothing to the skill score. Add nothing to the skill score. Two to three is a minor success. You can add one, plus one to the skill score. Four to five is success add plus two to the skill score, and then six is a resounding success, add plus three to the skill score. As you test each skill, you should also journal what you did to improve that skill. For instance, honing your prowl skill might have resulted from stalking and catching a passing butterfly, or your jump score may not have increased due to a knock in confidence when attempting to jump up uh, a step and failing. Once you've created your kitten, you can advance to the young adult life cycle stage and begin exploring the world. Okay. I think one of the things that I missed out here was I might, do I need to write a journal entry? I think I do. Or when I just start out. Um, Once you've selected your background, write something in your journal about where you were born. Okay. I feel like we need to also, I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna move forward here and look at the scenario because, um, I want to just, Double check that this is exact. This is what I want to do. Oh, there's a there's a nice little turn cheat sheet over here. I'm gonna just switch my journal over for a second. Um, so that's really handy. Um, 
something like that. That's really helpful. More games, more games need stuff like that. Um, it's something that you know a lot of board games do, but not necessarily um, uh, RPGs or TTRPGs. Okay, so Urban Cat, be like a cat scenario. Um, look at the angry cats here. I'm just sort of jumping ahead because I want to make sure that um, this is the scenario that I want to do. Urban Cat is the base scenario for Be Like a Cat. It's a great way to learn the game in a contemporary town or city setting before moving on to some of the al uh, alternative worlds offered by other scenarios. Like other Be Like a Cat scenarios, it comes with a few of its own unique rules and options. Uh, so there's rooftop travel, time and life cycle stages, um, forbidden locations. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's what I need. That's what I want. All right. Mm. So I will go back into the cat stat sheet and write, um, urban. So it's just called urban, urban cat. And then we need to write a journal entry about where you were born, approaching it with fresh eyes as if you were seeing everything for the first time. Um, I, oops, let's go with my pen. I, it was a fortuitous. day when I was born into this world to a royal litter, litter Many weeks passed under the care of my mother, the queen. Before I was whisked away for royal duties in another realm.
my current abode um, finds me in an apartment with a wonderful view of the city. Okay, so um, Princess Lefloof, Princess Donut Lefloof the third, um, says, um, it was a fortuitous day when I was born into this world to a royal litter. Many weeks passed under the care of my mother, the queen, before I was whisked away for royal duties in another realm. My current abode finds me in an apartment with a wonderful view of the city. Okay, um, now we have to go back into cat step sheet. All right, so all of these um, are, I need to put a one in all of them. One, 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 one. So I'm going to mark two skills from each category to be developed. Um, so I think preen, for sure, under survival, and um, maybe prowl, because I feel like she might be good at prowling, but not necessarily hunting. <laughs> Cute, for sure, under social. Um, and play. I'm going to say land is going to be a skill that she wants to develop because uh, she wants to land elegantly. Um, and maybe climb. Or maybe not climb. I think I might say balance. Because that seems like a skill that she goes hand in hand with, you know, being elegant. Um, now for combat, we've got claw, bite, pounce, and evade. I'm going to go with pounce and evade, I think. Because at this point, I don't feel like she's, you know, she has this, you know, hunter's need to, um, you know, do very much. I think she's probably very pampered. Okay, so now I need to start rolling. So I'm going to roll for Prowl first. That was a two. So I can add plus one to this one. For preen, yeah, I imagine she was taken away from her siblings. She's just a, a single cat now. <laughs> uh, six. Oh, uh, resounding success. So preening, of course, <laughs> of course, preening. Uh, so I'm gonna add plus three to that, 
which is uh, for control for cute now. Oh no, failure. Add nothing to the score. She's not as cute as she thinks she is. Play, also one. Um, oh, I'm supposed to be adding, um, okay, I'm supposed to be adding journal entries as I do this, I think, which means I probably need to take a, a break. Um, all right, I'm going to, I might redo some of the, I'm, I, I'll go back to social. So Prowl and Preen, I need to um, write a journal entry for. Um, to determine, you know, how how she developed these prow um, the prowling skill and then the preening skill, and then we'll go through the rest of it. I I do feel like because um, I'm taking my time here, as I usually do with character creation, this might this whole session might just be character creation, and then next week we'll actually get into the scenario of um, her venturing out and expanding her territory. Um, so I'm gonna just pause for. Um, about five minutes just to refill my water, take a pie break. Um, I will be back shortly um, and I'll see you uh, in about five minutes. Mm -hmm.